Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Moe, and we are here today with some more Star Citizen. Now, about a week ago, I set out with a mission for myself, a personal mission, to play Arena Commander, the PvP portion of the game, specifically Battle Royale, at least once a day for an entire week. Doesn't matter, 15 minutes, 3 hours, whatever I could, just play the damn thing. I haven't played the PvP portion of Arena Commander in months, and I know that it's gotten better since then, I just haven't really taken the time to sit down and do what I needed to do to spend a bit of time playing it and have a good time, or at least try to have a good time while doing so. Now to preface this, preface this whole thing, one of my biggest issues when Arena Commander first launched was the joystick support. Obviously it was very rough. The X-52 was terrible. <laughs> I mean, the sensitivity with the yaw, everything was an absolute nightmare. Eventually, they gave us the ability to modify all of those settings on our own in-game. Dead zone, sensitivity for X, Y, Z, whatever access you needed to modify, you could go ahead and do that. It was a bit daunting, however, looking at that list of sensitivities and dead zone sliders, and then actually sitting there trying to refine it all to make sure that your ship handled as best as it possibly could with your setup. For me, the X-52 with the throttle and the joystick, the HOTAS setup. And I never really took the time. I roughly got it there. I was able to spend a little bit of time playing things like Co-op Vandal Swarm and having quite a bit of fun. You saw my video, Can't Stop Drooling, where I really did. I started to just fall in love with the combat of the game, but there was a part of me that wanted to dogfight against other players so badly. I just knew that every time I tried to head out into it, I just walked away really frustrated and didn't want to pick up the game for several weeks after that. So I set out and said, if I can make my X-52 work with the M-50, probably the twitchiest and quickest ship in the game to the point where I can start setting sub-120 second laps on the first course in racing, then I feel like I'll have accomplished what I need to accomplish to be able to fly just about any other ship in combat and have a good time while doing it. So I did just that. About three hours worth of tweaking dead zones and sensitivity sliders in free flight in Vandal Swarm and in racing, back and forth, very tedious process, but I eventually got to the point where the M50 was a lot of fun to fly in racing, and I've actually been spending some time racing. But then I decided, all right, let's hop into the PvP, let's do it for a week, every day, play as much as I can, when I can, and let's do it with the Hornet, the F7CM. So I did it. <laughs> and today we're gonna talk about my experience and what I walked away with. The first thing I really want to just say right off the bat is that I had an, an exceptional amount of fun playing Battle Royale over the last week, more than I ever thought I would have. It turns out that Star Citizen, it turns out that Battle Royale, I should say, the PvP portion of Arena Commander is chock full of these really great Battlefield type moments. You know the Battlefield campaign, Battlefield moment, oh that grenade went flying over your head and took out a truck behind you and then your buddy shot the guy. Crazy stuff like that, right? That just happens because that's how the game works and crazy stuff happens like that all the time. It turns out that Battle Royale's full of those moments. <laughs> As you saw from that intro clip, that Avenger tumbling through space like a TIE fighter with Darth Vader inside. <laughs> and there's just a dozen more moments like that that I've experienced over the course of that week. A few of them that you're going to see in these clips. This is actually a clip from my play session today. Several clips from my play session today. I was sticking it out just in the Hornet. Now, over the course of the week, I do want to note that I flew some other ships. I messed around with the Avenger. I messed around with even things like the um, the Mustang and the Aurora. Just to see what it was all about. See what kind of shape they were in currently while playing PvP. And they were all a lot of fun. I just really kind of felt myself lashing on to the Hornet. On top of that, the Hornet was actually a really great exercise in track AR head tracking for my gimbaled weapons, so I really kind of just stuck with it. And if I'm completely honest, I really do love the Hornet. I don't own one, but it's a beautiful looking ship, and to me it's always sort of had this retro sort of Star Wars feel to it. It's like what an X-Wing could have looked like it in some ways. Somebody will probably shout blasphemy at that for that one, but really, I really just love its sort of retro, sharp, angled appearance that it has, for lack of a better way of describing the ship. And at the end of the day, I just was really excited to fly it a bunch, so that's what I did. Now, I spent all of my time in Battle Royale, as I said, I didn't play anything else, I just did the free-for-all. And on top of all of those really great moments that kept happening, you know, the random me chasing my own missiles to the target or, you know, again, having a out of control ship barely clip your nose and almost kill you. There was just this really great sense of involvement and immersion 
when you just started to sit down and really focus on playing the game in a very specific manner. And for me, I decided, all right, let's just let's play this like I, I would if I was actually taking this serious. Let's just not go headfirst into a group of people. Let's try and flank around the outer edges of the map, make use of these now you know, twice as large maps, use all this empty space to plan my attack, to drag people into bits of the broken moon or the asteroid belt on dying star, and put them in a place where I want them to be when it's my turn to start engaging them. So I did a bunch of that, and more than once I found myself engaged in a one-on-one -on -one firefight that sometimes lasted up to 10 minutes. Just me and another guy picking away at each other, throwing ourselves around, firing off some missiles whenever we could, breaking, you know, lock with chaff, uh, with other targets with asteroid and just in our own little world you know sort of this well-written ballet among the chaos while everybody else is wreaking havoc on each other we were chasing each other down in a volley of missiles lasers and barrel rolls trying to kill one another and those moments happened more often than you would think and they just they put a really big grin on my face they made me want to keep coming back for more they took away some of the frustration that was still left with you know some of the the lack of refinement when aiming with my X-52 controls, or just my inability to use my head tracking to target my gimbaled weapons effectively. It kind of made all of that go away, and it just put me into this really happy, special place. On top of that, it highlighted a lot of the ridiculous details that have been put into Star Citizen. You know, the just the small effects when a rocket or a missile or any sort of projectile starts ricocheting off the, the shields on your ship, and you get to see it right in front of your eyes, you know, just this barrage of missiles smashes into the front of your shields, and you get to watch it on your uh, through your through the glass of your cockpit. There's just these little individual mo you know f feelings that are all just you know very they feel very precisely designed. You know every time that round clips your wing, you just feel the ship sort of stutter in that direction. There's just a lot of small things you don't notice until you play the game for an entire week, like I did, I guess. You know, it's things that just don't stick out until you really have a chance to absorb to absorb them fully, you know, to be like, wow, that I didn't realize that did that when that hit that, you know, and ah, uh, who knew I could fly around with that piece of my shit missing? And that the whole week was just full of those types of moments. I mean, there was times where I just couldn't even understand how I was still alive. And in the same vein, there were times where I died so quickly, I couldn't understand how I died so quickly. It was this back and forth tug of war of just starting to accept and discover all of these new elements and bits and pieces of the combat as it currently stands in SC that I just wasn't aware of, I wasn't familiar with, I guess would be the best way to say that. Now one of the other great things about Battle Royale is actually just how chaotic it is almost all the time. You get these very small percentage moments where there's sort of this silence, you're flying around the outer edge of the map, and maybe you're engaging one target, but then all of a sudden, before you know it, you've chased that target into the middle of the map and you're into the fray. There's five or six other people all locking on, engaging each other with missiles. Hell, I've even been killed by missiles that were meant for another target just because of bad luck, wrong place, wrong time sort of thing. But I think that kind of captures the the whole experience of of the battle royale game mode. Is that you know you can go from these individual dogfight moments to three versus three, no one's on any team, but it kind of seems like people are <laughs> in just a matter of moments. And throughout all of this, all these other ships flying past you, these missiles that you're dodging, missiles hitting other targets in front of you, the sense of speed and movement is portrayed better than it ever has been. Better than you see it in free flight when flying past in stationary, you know, uh, a target. Uh, you know, better than in Vandal Swarm. You just really feel like you are moving through space at some sort of a speed, whether it be significant or not. And in the same vein, you feel like missiles and rounds are on their own little flight paths, you know, when you're actually fast enough that you are able to fly and catch up with the missile that is chasing a locked-on target. It's all those moments that made PvP and Arena Commander feel more special than it ever has for me. And I know that this video is going to sound like just one guy sort of just drooling and fanboying all over the place, but the simple fact was the week that I spent with Battle Royale was the best week I've had with, her, with, with Star Citizen ever. And I think I'll remember this all the way up until the full release of the game when I'm flying out in space. And at the same time, it's made me very excited for other portions of the game, more so than I was before. I would really love after after my week to see a 1v1 dogfight mode, a mode that is specifically designed on putting pilots in very difficult 
to fly areas, cramped asteroid fields, you know, broken down shipwrecks in space, where they can just focus on engaging one another, just full on 1v1 dogfighting, really putting their skills to the test, no distractions, no random Aurora out somewhere locking missiles on to anyone who hasn't realized that he's sitting behind that asteroid, just you and one other pilot in the zone you know, fully intimately engaging one another. Because moments like that, like I said, they clicked, they happened in Battle Royale. And then they were usually disrupted by someone crashing into you or a missile taking out your target or perhaps a missile taking out your target. And I'd like to think that that person who was in that dogfight for me, with me for 10 minutes was just as disappointed as I was when it came to such an abrupt end. So who knows what we'll see. Uh, I know they haven't really talked too much about a 1v1 mode, but it does make me very excited for the idea of dogfighting another pilot in the Persistent Universe, you know, maybe even in atmosphere. I mean, that really gets me excited, the idea of dogfighting in atmosphere and then like shooting out into space. Ugh. Enough speculation though, that gets everybody way too excited. Simple fact is, I had a lot of fun this week with Arena Commander, with the Battle Royale mode, and it's kind of hooked me on the PvP. I mean, I'm going to be playing this just about every day now. It's like when I used to sit down in Elite Dangerous every day and just go bounty hunting. That's what I'm going to be doing with Star Citizen. I'm probably going to be doing a lot more videos. We're going to be talking about the different ships that I'm going to fly. I'm going to try out some of the Mustangs before the week is over. People are always asking me to show the Mustang, so maybe I'll fly one of the combat variants of the Mustang and give it a go. I really didn't give it a proper chance before I sold it off to rebuy an Avenger. So we'll see how that goes. But I suggest to you, if you're somebody who's a joystick user and you've sort of been putting aside the PvP because you didn't want to deal with all the frustrations, take the time. You know, grab the quickest ship, the, the twitchiest ship you have. Spend a little bit of time trying to refine those controls. See if you can't get to a comfortable place and then try and spend a week with Battle Royale like I did. And I feel like you'll you'll come away having discovered a lot of small things about SC, about the combat, and just about the game itself that will, that will make you appreciate what it is at such an early state more than you did before. And of course, if there's any of you guys who have similar experiences to me, maybe you actively play the PvP, or maybe you were turned off or you're trying to overcome sort of an issue that is preventing you from playing the PvP, feel free to share that stuff in the comment section below. We, of course, have, hopefully, before the end of March, uh, patch 1.1, which is going to be doing some big changes to gimbaled weapons and fixed weapons, and, of course, the FPS module, which we'll also hopefully be seeing before the end of March. But, of course, as always, you can expect me to be checking out both of those, the patch and the FPS module, when they finally drop, right here on the channel. That's gonna do it for this one. Fly safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.